quick note to notice. Notice this brake uh, brake booster. Yeah, there was stuff running down it where I took a brake uh, cap off and stuff, and it was fluid run, fielded, overfielded, etc., etc. I thought this running out of the bottom here was actually. At first, I thought it was just me. I thought I'd spilled it. You know, you've seen me spray these also. You're like, that's a spray. Well, behind here and inside, right there, that is brake fluid, my friends. That is for sure brake fluid. I smelled it. There should not be brake fluid in here. The piston was leaking on this master cylinder. So I for sure know my master cylinder was 100% my problem. And uh, we're going to clean all this up. I'm going to take a little brake clean and spray it down um, and get it all good and cleaned up because it just don't need to be nasty like that. It's not good. The rubber in a lot of these boosters in the diaphragm and stuff, if you get brake fluid back in the booster, it's garbage. I I'm sorry. It usually is. I may not have to actually take some brake clean to this. I believe I got it pretty well clean. I wanted to get the scaly rust and stuff out of there. But what I will do before I put it back on, I'm going to take a dab of axle grease, just regular bearing grease, and I'm going to grease this, um, this slide tube. See? It goes back inside the booster. I'm going to grease it. I may use some brake system grease. I think that's what I'll use instead of actual axle grease. It's um, got a different consistency. And I'm going to also put a little around in there just to prevent that from necessarily corroding. Anywhere there's grease or oil, it will not corrode. And we don't want that to corrode and rust a hole through the booster. Hopefully, uh, this won't be back apart for several years. So, that's what we're hoping for. But yeah, I'm going to use some of this. For things like this, it's handy stuff. It, it really is. It comes in a tube. It's handy. You can tote it around your toolbox, whatever. You can use it on your brake slides and things to that nature. Anywhere that your brake shoes meet the, the backing plate, etc. Things to that nature. But like in this, it's real good for that. So it's good for moving moving parts, and it's also compliant with like rubber seals and things. It's um, you know, because if you think about it, your slides on your calipers have rubber seals. It's engineered to be used in this circumstance. I've got some crap on that rod I need to wipe off. Left my rag on the other side of the truck, of course. It's outside the point of where it. Um, goes through the seal and it looks like his seal's got quite a bit of um looks like it's got quite a bit of lubrication already there but we don't know that this lubrication is um brake fluid it could be so we'll put a little of that on there just for prevent prevention and slickums there is a that piece it has a big flat round knob on the back of it it fits in the reaction plate inside the booster. See? You can fit it in. It don't move up and down. You pull it out and it flops. You gotta just kind of feel it around. It'll slide right in. You also want to put a little grease on the end of that because if you've seen the one that I actually put on Tomator, um, it was stuck inside the master cylinder and it was because it was corroded. That's what it was. You don't want to put a ridiculous amount. I got too much on my finger. You don't want to put a ridiculous amount on there. Just enough to prevent a little corrosion and things. If you're up north or if you're in Canada, you know how it is for brake parts to rot off your cars. Um, like I said, this grease, I'm applying it inside here. It has no point other than to, you know, any metal that's got oil or grease on it tends as a rule not to rust. You know, that's all there is to it. And as you pull that off of your tube and you squirt it on your finger, be sure not to contaminate your tube of grease. I was being careful of that fact. But we're just going to put a little in there, like I said, to keep it from rusting. Um, we don't want it to rust, and I don't want to have to replace it. I do actually believe that booster has a lifetime warranty, too. I know, almost know it does, but I'm not going to. I don't want to take it off. These boosters here are a pain in the high end to get off of the truck. It's, it's not like, a lot like the Chevrolet. You've actually got to deal with taking it loose from the panel and all that bunch of noise. It's not a fun adventure. So, <laughs> well anyway, you've seen how I done that. I'm gonna get this master cylinder spun back onto this brake block. It's a little bit of a pain in the hind end. I'll get that and back on. And as soon as I get that spun back on there and get it tightened and get it in position, 
I'll turn yens back on. Because like I said, it's there's no point in yens watching me fight with it. There ain't no fun to it. Okay, boys and girls. You see no master cylinder. You also see a cut off brake line. I actually cut it off. And for yens, I'll say it. No, I didn't break it. Trying to put it on that way. I was sitting looking at it. It looked like it was something running down it. Well, I thought, well, okay, that's where I've sprayed penetrating on. Well, I wiped it off. Cleaned it off good. Had my finger over the end of it where it connects to the master cylinder. And yet again, it was still running down it. And I got a looking, got a looking. There was a pinhole in that line right up next to the fitting. It was very thin. Um, that I must have disrupted basically a chunk of rust whenever I was um, spending it around to get it off. It's time for a new brake line going into my brake controller. That's just all there is to it. I'm going to put a new brake line on it. I could just omit it, bypass it, not use it. You know, ever since I wrecked the truck, it had a had a homemade welded on trailer hitch, and of course, it had to be cut off. It was bent up and everything. Well, I haven't even put a trailer hitch back on the truck. But, I'm going to, and you know, I do have the <laughs> things that I do pull that need electric brakes. Um, I've got a fifth wheel hitch that actually goes in this truck and a fifth wheel camper that uh, requires those brakes to stop. So, I need to, I need to make a trip to the parts store, I guess. Uh, I could call them and have them bring it to me, but they ticked me off the other day. And like I said, uh, I've said in earlier videos, um, one of the people that actually works there, the store manager, he watches my videos. He knows why I'm mad. I mean, I was um, actually their number two commercial account last month in purchases. I wasn't number one, but I was number two and had an assistant uh, smart off to me and I called him and asked me, asked him if he could deliver me something. Didn't like his attitude. Ah, uh, well, my call to Advance Auto Parts. They didn't have a driver. This was on a Saturday. They didn't have anybody that could bring it to me. You know, okay. They was nice about it. Unlike him. And, uh, well, anyway, after I got done buying the parts, yeah, uh, you know where I went. About a block up the road, throwed the receipt down on the counter, and I said, that'd look good on your daily sales, wouldn't it? And I walked out, and I ain't spoke to him since, so, you know, so be it. If that's how you want to treat people, that's how you want to treat people. Well, Toe Wrecker wants to be treated, uh, you know, fairly, you know. You know, if you don't have somebody to do something, you don't, uh, smart off and go, well, you're going to have to come get it. Like that right there on the telephone. Wrong, wrong move. You don't do that. You'd be like, man, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't have anybody can run it out there to you. Uh, you you're going to have to come and get it. I, I'm sorry. You know, like that. You know, I'd have been cool with it. I drove in there. But I also found out that they've been kindly raping me on price, too, at the same time. But anyway, that's part of something else. That's not part of this video. But, you know, if you're watching... Um, Watching to learn how to change this master cylinder, you got to hear me rant and rave. If you're um, watching it because you like old tow wrecker, you you like it. But anyway, I promise you, you will see how to put it back on. Till I get a brake line, I may run to the Napa. Napa's about three miles from here. I may run to the Napa. Anyway, see y'all. Okay, brake controller, boys and girls. Well, anyway. I had to replace this line coming off the master the master cylinder to it because it was bad. Well, I went to take a line loose from this unit and I found that. That, my friends, is brake fluid leak brake fluid leaking. Well it wasn't leaking from the um by the way, this is what this is. If anybody has one of these exactly like it, model 2016 uh, shoot me a PM I do want to buy it don't ask me why I just want the darn thing um, so if anybody has one of these laying on a shelf they've took off an old truck that's what the model is if you got it on an old truck old parts truck there's what it looks like I want to buy it plain and simple just send it to me or you can send it to me for free if you want to but anyway here's what I want to know we've got two wires that run to the back of the truck right there is the black and the blue the red one's cut off Okay, I'm confused. The black, I would think, is the feed to the trailer brakes. The red, I would think, is power, and the blue, I would think, is a ground. That's kind of what I think. 
I may be wrong, wrong, wrong. You know, you've got a light in this thing. It's supposed to be here. It may even be an on-off switch. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I always just assumed this blasted thing worked. My dad had it put on years ago. But anyway, there's your adjustment. I understand that. And I'm assuming your adjustment rod there would be a ground. I'm assuming. Because the other side of the light took to it. What's that red wire? Does anybody know what these three wires are? Somebody please tell me. But anyway, um, I don't know if I'm missing one that needs to be hooked up or what. I don't really know. I'm confused. Well, anyway, what operates in this thing, here's what this hooks into. This operates, it's like a brake cylinder. It operates, it pushes, pushes that. Well, anyway, well, it was full of nasty, and yes, it had been leaking. Well, I don't own a brake hone that small. So the next best thing, I took a piece of 400 grit DA paper, rolled it up real tight, and I got it in there, and I kept spinning it around and around, working it up and down, around and around, up and down. <laughs> got a good cross hatch in it. Well, if you can see, come on. Got to get it. Well, anyway, don't know if you can truly see it like I can, but it's it's got a good cross hatch down in it. Anyway, it's got a cross hatch. Good enough. This is the seal, which you know darn good and well is something you cannot, where are we at? Something you cannot buy, okay? Well, this seal is actually in real nice shape. It was just, it had some nasty, like, sludge crap in it. And it just all needed to be cleaned up. I still need to clean this up a little more, and I need to lubricate it with brake fluid, just slather it down. I need to also clean this out after I had it sandpaper down in it, but I'm not going to stuff it in there. But it goes in there, and then fluid pushes it out in and out. I'm not going to stick it in there because the grit's still in there. But, um... That's the deal with that. But somebody tell me what that other wire is. I'm kindly confused. You know, I always thought red would be power. I would figure that the red would be power, the black would be a ground, and the uh, blue would be the feed to the trailer brakes. But yeah, the two of them wires are a whole lot bigger than the red one. That's what kind of confuses me. The red one, you would think, would be probably something else. And I would think that the other two would control. I don't know. It just it don't make sense. And, of course, you ain't going to find no instructions for that on the Internet. So, somebody tell me. See y'all. Okay, everybody. Well, we are not doing the brake, uh, the brake um, controller. It's not getting hooked back up. I'm actually going to have to find another one. I'm not really pleased about that. It's kind of just the uh, whole what's the way it's always been thing. But um, if anybody you all has got one of those, it's good. Uh, I'm interested in it. The coil is actually shorted inside it. Uh, it is actually no good, so there's no sense in putting it back on the truck at this point. You know, there's no sense in putting a brake line on it or anything else because, and plus, where that cylinder, that ought to be a good shot, where the cylinder is leaking, you know, it was leaking. I got a good cross hatch on it, all that, but, you know, still yet, the rest of the controller is no good, so. There's no sense in putting it on there and fooling with it. We're going to put the master cylinder on and worry about getting brakes on it. So, what we've got to do, the first thing we're going to do, considering we eliminated that, is we are going to slide said master cylinder up on here. Well, said master cylinder don't want to go up on there. I'm not real sure why there it goes we wasn't uh wasn't holding her mouth right is what we wasn't doing apparently but anyway i've got it up on there i still got this front plug out i actually took it back out i was piddling around this brake line mind you has been bent in the past to fit that um what you call it and it's it's boogered up. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's had vice grips on it. And I did not do this. I don't really know who did. Actually, I know who did. The fella's dead and gone that actually put the brake control on. And uh, back in the, I don't know, early 80s, I guess. Early to mid 80s. And uh, I'm not going to bash the guy. But this one still froze up. And I really don't want to have to replace the entire brake line. But, there is that indeed fact, the inherent fact, that I may have to. And no, I'm not going to do the twisted around. I went this far. 
I really wouldn't suggest doing what I'm doing, spraying lubricant around with it open. It's not really a good idea. I don't know. I hope to God you can see what I'm doing. Yens can't even see me. How funny. Let's get you down here where you can see. Yeah, I'm zoom, let me zoom out a little bit. There. There. You should be in frame. But anyway, what I done, what I just done, this had vice grips on it. So I'm stuck to resort to that. And what I actually did was I sprayed some of this freeze off. There's your little label. I sprayed some of that on there around it. And like I said, I wouldn't suggest doing that on an open brake system, but we're going to bleed this. It's not going to be of danger. I mean, I wouldn't want to introduce something into the brake system that shouldn't be there. But we've got to get that broke loose from that line. We have no choice. Otherwise, we can't install it. And believe it or not, she's breaking loose, even though she looks like a, like a dog's chewed on it. She's loosening up. And that's, that's what's necessary. She's got to loosen. Somebody didn't take this little bit of time and this little bit of effort years ago, what I come doing right now. And they instead rung it, rounded it off by not using a line wrench. Oh, that's good now. By not using a line wrench, and they pretty well foobarred the old girl. So, but we're back in good shape. Should be. Seemed like it was turning decent. It's not great. But it's also bent just a hair right there too, which really don't help matters none. Once again, do not do as you see me do. I am an experienced redneck, okay? There. I've got it where I can turn it by hand. Like I said, don't do things. Don't do exactly as I show you sometimes do when I tell you not to do it don't do it there is reasons for that because you could have very well have broke that line right there and sent yourself into a humongous brake job and like I said this is just aggravating this dollar is to it but I don't want to go through replacing that line right now the line is good it's this end and one of those deals where if you can get it to line up, well, that right there, I don't know how it bent, but it just happened to bend and it bent right. Hallelujah. Well, we started in like 2 3 and 3 easily by hand, so I know we're right. I know we're started. So we're going to walk this in with the Mexican fits all or whatever you just want to call it. Mexican socket set. Some people call it crescent wrench that. I found out something the other day that apparently in Australia, what we call a crescent wrench or an adjustable wrench is called a shifter. That's um, what Ed called it, Aussie 50. If you don't know who I'm talking about, you definitely need to check him out. Um, he's a, I guess what you'd call a scrappy. Um, he likes to play with scrap stuff. And he plays the scrap yard like the rest of us do, except he gets some industrial scrap. Yeah, he gets some very interesting stuff. But anyway, we're gonna, I hate doing this. I hate putting vice grips on it because I just know it's wrong. And it, it's hard, it's not easy. You're much better off to use a line wrench as I showed you earlier on the removal. I mean, that's just how it goes, but gosh almighty, this is horrible using vice grips. This pair of vice grips just, I've never liked this pair of Craftsman vice grips. I've got a whole set that have these big fat rubber handles and all that crap on them. I don't like them. And while you're tightening these, you need to make sure your line don't start turning with it. Because if your line starts turning with it, you're in trouble. And this is like trying to tighten up a round peg. It has no teeth left on it, the, the actual connector. There, I've got it snugged up enough for now. It needs to be a little tighter, but I also need to put some 
Put some bolts in this booger. Or some nuts to hold it on, the mash cylinder, before I even wrench on it any harder. And the only reason I went ahead and put that on there was because of the, um, the, um, the fact it was open. That was the only reason why, just to seal it up. Feels like it's been five hours since I did this. And it's not, it's been a matter of 10 minutes, 15, something like that. Let me grab some uh, anti-seize real quick. This is probably not a half two. I know it wins horrible too, but I'm gonna slap a little on there on those threads just to prevent. I can't even see what I'm doing. I hope that was actually the thread, not the side of the master cylinder. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, it was a little of both, but yeah, I ain't like you can really use too much of it. And I see it's good stuff. Let's see. Hopefully, I won't ever have to put another one on. Hopefully, I'll be dead and gone. Somebody else will be fooling with this. Ain't like I have any kids, so it'll be somebody I don't even know, so I can sit back and laugh about it. But anyway. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna completely install this on video. I'm just doing what I'm doing here and ends will have to read between the lines. Get this fitting back in and then I'm gonna let you be with the video. That's down there somewhere. See what I mean about I'm like a Chevrolet. This is one thing I can say about it, between a Ford and a Chevrolet that just royally ticks old tow wrecker off. And that's these lines being on the inside like they are. And this truck sets up so high, you about have to climb. And I bent these lines around if you remember. So I've got to find my angle back to get this started. Don't uh, want to cooperate. It's twisted, or there she goes. But anyway, tighten her down. If you get her all tightened down, it's time to bleed your brakes. So that's how you change a master cylinder on one of these boogers. And like I said, the NICs and the vice grips are uh, are optional, but. You'd be surprised how many times you get to these and they've had vice grips already on them because people didn't have a line wrench and they rounded them off. And then when they round them off, the only other option they've got. So that's what you do. See y'all. Okay, everybody. We did not show brake bleeding. Sorry. It's um, too big of a pain in the ying, but I will show you how I did it. You know, I mean, it's just too much difficulty. Brake fluid's rough on cameras and finishes on the cameras. and. Yeah, we're just not, we're not going there. Right now I'm actually cleaning up my Mighty Vac. But let me get it wiped down enough where I can show you what I did. Put it back, semi put it back together. Okay. I'm not quite going to put it together, but you'll get the point. All right. Zoom out. Mighty Vac this cup this end put this end on the bleeder and pump that's the extent of it you're looking at this going hey that's wet what's the deal with that brake fluids water soluble that's how you clean these things up before you put them up wash them with a the water hose works like a charm just rinses brake fluid just rinses right off you know so I always remember that but anyway I'm gonna top up my master cylinder and put my lid on see y'all